Use of the Parameterization Wizard. This video will demonstrate how to parameterize your script so you're reading unique data for all users in your test from a CSV file. This is a script which has been recorded against a demo application called ShopIt, which is a sample e-commerce application. The DCL form section in the script contains data which has been entered into forms within the application during record. It is common to record with one set of data but want to use different data for each virtual user in your test. This video will demonstrate how you would modify the form values to use unique data for each user from a CSV file. Here we have the username entered into the application during record. We can customize this as follows. Highlight the value, right click and select the customize value option from the pop-up list. This will open the parameter wizard which will guide you through your parameterization. With the parameter wizard, you can modify script values in one of two ways. You can either use an existing parameter that's already defined in your script, or you can create a new parameter. Here we will select to create a new parameter. The next screen allows you to select the type of parameter. Constant value will use the same value for all users throughout the test. Parameter from random file allows you to define a random variable. The type that we will focus on is parameter from multi-column data file. This option enables you to generate a data-driven test, which will allow you to store all user data for a test in a single file. For example, username, password, address, and so on. In the next screen, you can either create a new file using this button, or you can choose a file from the drop-down list. The contents of this list are taken from the Silk Performer data folder, and this is also where you should place any custom data files you wish to use for your tests. Here you can also see the handle that will be used to refer to the file within the script and the parameter name. For this test, we will select a file we have already created. In the first column, we can see our list of usernames, so we highlight this column. After clicking Next, we must select how we wish the data to be used within the test. Firstly, the row selection order. Random means that there will be no pattern to how the rows are accessed during the test. Users will just randomly select a row from the file. Sequential, machine-wide. Users on each agent used in the test will access the rows in a sequential fashion. The pointer is not held across agents, and so users running on different agents will be accessing the same rows of the file. Sequential, test-wide. Each user in the test, regardless of agent machines, will be accessing the rows in the file sequentially. The handle is held globally across all agents and users will all be accessing unique rows. We will select sequential test-wide to ensure that all users use unique data across all agents. Below that is the attribute section. Here you can specify if you want a user to keep the same value for the duration of the test, or if they should pick a new value on each iteration of the transaction. Now, when we look in the script, we can see where we load the file in the initial transaction, t in it. If we had selected the per test attribute rather than per transaction in the last step of the wizard, we would also see the functions for accessing the rows of the CSV file here in tinit. Instead, as we had selected per transaction, these functions are scripted in tmain. Firstly, we see the file get next unique row function. This function is the one used to create a sequential test wide unique pointer to the row after the current row. This is a relatively new function, which was only introduced in the last few versions of Silk Performer. If we had selected random, we would get the file get round row function scripted here instead. And for sequential machine wide, we would see the function file get next row. After the current row pointer is set with the appropriate function, you can access the columns of the row with the file get call function. This function outlines the column we have selected from the CSV file. We also see that there has been a shutdown transaction created, and here we have the function to unload the CSV file again at the end of the test. In the DCL form section, we can see the original code which specified the username has been commented out, and a new line has been entered referencing the variable we have just created. As discussed earlier, the same CSV file can be used to store all information relating to your test, so I will now demonstrate how to reuse the same CSV file in your test. Again, we simply need to highlight the value we wish to customize. In this instance, we will choose City, and again, right-click and select Customize Value. Again, we will create a new parameter from a multi-column data file. 
This time, when we click Next, we will see that we have the option to either create new to specify a new CSV file which we haven't yet used in this test, or, as we're going to do, you can use an existing file. The list shows any files which have already been used. Here we will select the file we have already used to customise the username. In the next screen, we can see that the file name and handle have been greyed out. As we have already specified, we will be using the loaded file. The parameter name has of course changed. Here we select the column we wish to use for our next set of data. In the next screen, we can see that all options are also greyed out. When you're creating a new parameter based on the file used for another, the option no longer exists to use it in a different way. It must use the same configuration options as the original parameter. Again, if we look in the script, we can see that the functions have been added to call the second column from the CSV file in a sequential order across the agents.